If you're going to be at the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship this weekend, I'm going to be handing these out to people for free. All right? uh, if you run into me very late in the day, though, there's going to be a chance I'm probably not going to have any of these left. So try to find me early. So let's hand you one of these nice little things. I do little things like this to kind of commemorate the events, you know, kind of have fun, engage with the community, and, you know, give people something relatively cool. So I hope that uh, you guys can find me well, and don't be disappointed if I'm out of these if you're too late in the day. Let's dig out in the market watch, shall we? <laughs> Don't make 30% if you guys have not smashed the other crap out subscribe and smash it. So it's good weekend vibes here for the Yu-Gi-Oh! Championship Series for North America. So what's going on in our market? Well, uh, I know you guys have been keeping up with Red Rose Dragon. This is really weird, by the way, because I still think Halki Fibrax is going to get, you know, destroyed on the next list. But don't tell players that because they're still believing that they can pick up the Red Rose Dragon package and do well with this. Ha, ha, ha. Six dollars for the ultras. Only eleven listings. We can get purple berries for like three dollars. I'd rather just get purple berries and save three bucks. You can get blueberries for threes as well. You can get green berries. I know nobody wants green berries. Or you can get shkamans down here for dollar ish. Honestly, seeing that these are disappearing in terms of numbers, I'm not really shocked about that per se. But when you see that the market is like looking at this stuff, maybe after this weekend, you'll see, you know, an immediate dump off of these things. But yeah, a little bit, a little bit interesting there. Ah, man, we've watched this card go. <laughs> this card's gone crazy. Um, personally, I guess something else had to go up from this set because if you look back traditionally at Dual Overload, um, I mean, Besides, like, Celine and Hulk being, like, the money cards back in the day here. We can get... That's a very cheap Celine. Uh, you're still looking at, like, 38 ish dollars for Celine. You know, Imperm's pushed down. But when you look at, like, the rest of the value on this set, like, Ashima here, Dagda's being 10 bucks. Heck, even Yuki Onas are now $5 for the Link 4. Dingrisus are 8 bucks. Zeke's basically 3 to $4, with a market price at 6 um, I'm just gonna tell you that, you know, looking at Dual Overload as a set, I mean, look at this, man. Like, $60 for boxes of this set? Yeah. It's, it's turnaround has been absolutely crazy to me. And I'm not surprised to see that it's more than doubled in price here. You know, speaking of things, the Cyber Dragon Infinity from this set has, uh, as you can see, jumped up relatively high here. Even though you're still looking at basically post-shipping, post-taxes, you're sitting at about $6 here. Little things that people don't realize that, you know, tax can push a card over a certain number here. But yeah, you're looking at 5 to $6 per copy of the Cyber Dragon Infinity. And we've already seen that the original print first editions of these are doing no favors to this whatsoever either. So there's that. I also wanted to give a shout out here to Kagetsuchi. Now, it's like some really weird mill deck that started to show up in Japan here. And it does involve that grass look screener, which I don't think it'll ever take off because grass is one of the best components to that deck. But I just wanted to look at Kagetsuchi because, remember, he says, send the top five cards of your deck to the graveyard as long as you can meet the conditions of two level four beast warrior monsters in order to make it. If somebody was to make, say, a really cool combo toolbox deck that could utilize, you know, being able to include these Beast Warriors to get that additional mill, much like, you know, being able to make the Chaos Ruler to mill off for tier elements and stuff for combo, then you would see a little bit of a spike in this card, per se. But for right now, they are $8. I do not see that deck ever actually taking off here in the TCG, but I just wanted to talk about this for a second because with tier elements and more of like the milling aspect of things coming here soon, you got to look at like these cards that create these free mill scenarios that can generate advantage. And you kind of got to give a little bit of a shout out to them because they're interesting in their own right. All right, next up here, Deep Sea Divas. Man, original print Divas for highest... <laughs> Highest rarity here, 150, 175. You know, the, <laughs> the reprints do pretty much the same thing, luckily. Um, I say this all the time, but I, I like having my blingy cards. Man, these Deep Sea Divas up, up, and away, too. The OTS reprints, I mean, you're looking at like $8 
per copies of these, but when you just look at how the market's doing its thing, you're just like, man, that's actually disgusting. Like, we've looked at Swap Frog endlessly here, too, and we've seen the dumb value that's being generated by stuff like that, but the other culprit over here is doing its job. Uh, shout out here to Trap Tricks Armoras, or Almororas, as you uh, say out here. Um, I'm only pointing this out because there's nine listings of this right now. And anytime we see a starlight start to go boom, in terms of numbers, guess what? Yeah, I don't think Almorora should disappear totally off the market. But when you see nine listings, I wouldn't be surprised in the next day or so. You blink and they're gone. It's just how the market works. Starving Venom Fusion Dragon. Um, I mean, it is a super poly target. Um, I think Drago Stapelli has better value here. Man, I love that intersecting curve there. The nice little push down for first eds. Yeah, these things are now 11 to $12 for first eds. That's way better than they were previously. I'll take that. I love the fact that the alternate arts is still 3 to $4. You can still pick up Fist of the Gadget Supers for literally the same price. What? I just get the alternate arts. I think they look cooler, man. Oh, man. Of course, we got to talk about Charmers. I forgot I pulled this up. <sighs> Starlight Charmers. Okay. Okay, Robbie. It's okay, buddy. You know, the market can't hurt you. Let's let's see here. Let's let's total up how much it is if you have all four charmers right now. I got my trusty calculator here. We're gonna go fourteen hundred. We're just gonna go lowest here. Uh, sure, we'll go eight fifty just for the kicks here. Ah, uh, you know what? We'll go seven hundred for Lina. God, that's so bad that those got bought up. Ah, uh, four fifty now for the Hitas. You guys remember a couple weeks back? When you could buy these, I remember. Oh, the Harks are going up to 315 now. Okay. And then Osses are at 300 right now. Now, if you've done your trusty math here, if you have all six of these cards, that's $4,000. Are you disgusted with that? Because I certainly am. I'm not surprised to see that Hita finally has crossed over that $400 mark. And then seeing the Dehark is now following up right behind it either. I'm not surprised. Lena hitting 700 though. That's actually disgusting. But, I mean, everybody had fair opportune time to pick these up uh, when, when Lena was $300. And nothing, nothing really lost, right? Like, you can only blame yourself for not going in. Chaos Hunter First Editions, we've looked at this thing like nine times. And we've seen this one coming from a mile away. All right, of course, $33, $50, $65, dollars for first edition copies of this. Disgusting. That's all I'm going to say about this. You love to see it, Market. And for Noble cards, you guys know that Renault's still like a $19 card. Roland here is still like two bucks. Uh, Charles is still kind of moving up as well. Like, a lot of value still to be had in the Infernoble Noble Knights. I'm genuinely shocked still. Which is Strike First Edition's Light Plays are at $7. I'm just kidding. I think they're more than that. Um, you can get Italian copies for 7 bucks. Sure. A lot of $7 on them is back here. Uh, 8 bucks. Yeah, you're looking at $8 for First Editions at this point. That's not bad. Daifo! Ghost Bell in the Not Cheap. Oh, boy. These are... These are still expensive. Three hundred and five dollars for these. On up to three fifteen. On up to three twenty. Here, you've been warned. If you're looking at certain things in Daifo, I don't think things are gonna go too crazy. Oh, this is actually really nice. Regulus is under two hundred now. Okay, Alba Lenitus actually reversing course now with that market price at ninety five. On up to the hundred and twenty four dollar mark. Okay, I'll take that. That's really good news. Uh, Pestrio Corvature here, fifty eight bucks. So good. Regulus's are down to 40 whole dollars. You love to see it, Market. Vice's Star Frost is 17. Psychic and Punisher are still 17s. And regular Vice's Star Frost are still 10. You know, Dipho still has decent value. And I understand that we are so close right now to seeing, you know, a tip in the scales for this. But all right, seven bucks. Try Heart's still seven dollars as well. Man, this set is uh, not looking too good anymore. And uh, last but not least, Exo Sister Shenanigans, 240 still. $85 for Mikhail, nothing's changed there. Pack's still at 65. Sophia's still at 50s. Regular pack's still at 20s. Uh, Mikhail's at $14. Nine bucks on Magnificas. 
Okay, so overall market pretty much is doing what I've expected it to do right now. We're maintaining the course right now, which is very, very good. And I think as we go forward here, we'll have to wait and see how things, you know, settle up. But I'm not surprised by anything that we've seen so far. So please leave a comment down below. Tell me what you guys think. Make sure you guys smash the leave a crap out of that subscribe button. And I'll see your beautiful faces this weekend. Peace out, guys. Patrons, thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching. Check out these other videos.